All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'm the artistic director and founder of the Festival Statesman, and I'm very, very fortunate to be here this morning with Dr. Carl Crossan, OAM, who is the. Uh, how do I introduce you, Carl? What should I say? <laughs> The composer. The composer. <laughs> Great. We were fortunate enough to get uh, the Festival States when we got a uh, grant from Arts SA, which enabled us to engage Carl to do a very special work for us, um, which will be premiering at the Festival of Voices uh, next week. So um, we'll tell you a bit more about that in a, in a moment. But Carl, tell us about this work. Yeah. Um, look, it's been an absolute joy to write, I have to admit. Um, when we first spoke about it, I had, you know, I've seen statesmen in concerts on a number of occasions, so I know the kind of stuff that you do, and I know the sound, and I know that, you know, that um, there's a real um, sense of life and energy, a real fire, if you like, and when I use that word, you, I see what you um, you <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, so I thought, all right, <coughs> I want the piece to have something, something lyric or something that really um, gives them a chance to be, <coughs> to be expressive. But I also want a section of the piece that actually has a chance to cook, yep. you know? And so right from the word go, there was always this idea that I wanted both of those characters in there. So to an extent that probably determined the overall form of the piece. Mm -hmm. But then the next thing I um, did was go searching for a text. And um, sometimes I write my own text, sometimes I take existing poems. <coughs> and um, there's been a number of text by um, the American poet um, Sarah Teasdale that I've set in recent um, years and I found one by her. The poem is actually called Barter. But essentially what the poem does is just talk about the good things in life and, the, and it makes the point they need to be enjoyed, and, you know. So it... Um, she talks about, you know, life has loveliness to sell, she says. You know, and then she talks about the scent of pine trees in the, um, in the rain, or, you know, the wonder on children's faces. But there's this wonderful phrase that she uses, a soaring fire that sways and sings. And that, that, really, that really sparked for me because to an extent, that idea of a fire that, that you know, burns, uh, well, within us, I suppose, that's, that's music. It is. You know? So for me, in slightly turning the poem around a little bit, that's the origin, I guess, of the title and of the overall flavour of the poem, you know, the fire within us that, that burns and sings. I think the guys were the got that and what was really exciting for me is being in Adelaide Chamber Singers mm -hmm. and having you write works for, for acts and, and having that real lyrical sense of composition I was so keen for festival statesmen to experience that mm -hmm. and so that first half of the piece I think really encapsulates that it's a bit of a you know a bit of a, a look into to that sound world that you, you move in um, but that phrase um, that you just mentioned that that's a really quite a nice Potential moment in the composition yeah, as well, yeah. and the guys sort of, you know, they they really get stuck into it, which yes. is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, 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 a there's another little line in there where it actually, where the poem, there's a little bit of a sense that it's actually directed at somebody. You know, there's a there's a line, arms that that love and hold, mm. and and um, you know. Uh, there's a number of Sarah T. South poems that you you sense are actually written to somebody. Mm -hmm. So even though this particular poem talks about life and about you know the joys and this fire, there's also a sense that it's really quite specific. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, the idea of actually performing the song, but letting the audience almost feel like it's being sung to them individually. Yeah. You know, is an important point. Is that maybe one of the reasons why you sort of feature a solo through there? Yeah, it's, yeah, it is actually. Um, so um, just just for our listeners, um, so Ben Katz is singing. Um, how would you even describe it? Is it sort of a, a, a solo that goes sort of over the first mm-hmm. half? Yes. It's sort of an improvised session section, and then John Webb does a little sort of uh, Bobby McFerrin <laughs> bit at the end yeah. as well. So you'll get to hear Ben do this. I think he's doing a great job. On oh, I think he is too. He, yeah, um, he actually has managed to encapsulate that that really fluid, flexible sort of crooner mm. uh, style. For this, I think he's doing a fabulous job, and I really enjoyed hearing um, um, John Webb do the little bit at the end. Actually, he's got the right uh, tone. For yeah, it, no, it? absolutely. <laughs> you know, I didn't know specifically whether you actually had a voice in. Um, statesman that that would be like that, but as it turns out, you do, and he's doing a superb job. Well, well that was part of the conversation, right? Like, yeah. And that's what for, for us, it's so amazing to have the composer yeah. just be like, "Oh, what do you think?" and just check yeah, yeah, with yeah. the composer. And I think another exciting part of this process is that to have you come in, and so we've had a number of rehearsals uh, with you, sort of at the helm, and also mm-hmm. coaching a little bit. And um, I think the guys have just—it's been real, a real eye opener for them. And I think as as a director and seeing you obviously working with you is great, but then have, having those guys have the opportunity as well, it's just been really special. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and look, it's been a real joy. They've been so responsive. I, they, um, you know, they're an absolute joy to work with. And, um, you know, they, they embrace, they engage. Uh, they were probably a little bit Suspicious is the wrong word. They were just a little bit sort of tent- <laughs> uh, tentative to start with. I, I think some of them know, know you at a distance before you get intimidated. <laughs> but, but you know, they have been absolutely, totally engaged with this, and it's I've been an absolute joy. And I only, I'm just sorry that I can't actually hear the very, very first performance. I'll hear it in Adelaide. Mm. when you're back in July. Well, just on that, so we're, as, as I said earlier, we're, we're heading out the Festival of Voices uh, next week. So we are performing the world premiere of yeah. uh, Fire That Sings by Carl Crossan at a uh, concert Voices at Five in the Hobart Town Hall. And that's on Wednesday, July the 5th. Uh, and then we come back home and then we're doing another concert uh, at Pilgrim Uniting Church, uh, which will be on Saturday, July the 15th at 4 p.m. And um, hopefully, Carl, you can make it. I hear it's an important anniversary for you. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, that particular day happens to be my wife <laughs> and my wedding anniversary. Um, so actually, it will be a you know be a nice thing to do. And I'm glad the concert is four o'clock because we'll then go out for dinner afterwards. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, is there anything else you want to tell us uh, for the audience? I know it's it's different. You know, for an audience to actually hear a piece for the first time, is there anything you kind of want to? to say or anything that you think is important they should know? Um, one of the things that I think is is really good about the way you guys um, um, approach this, the introduction, you know, the very the very first notes in a piece, you know, uh, do a number of things, but one of the things they do is basically invite the audience into the music, mm-hmm. um, into the piece. Yeah. And I think the way that you guys do that little introduction very much invitational. Mm-hmm. It really is, you know, a sense of come into our world and experience this. And so I think that, you know, all I would say to an audience is just let yourself be led. Mm-hmm. You know? And and then Ben's Ben Solo will yeah. really continue to draw me. And I, I think yeah, you're, that, that beautiful introduction just kind of unfolds then the soloist and then the, the chorus that comes in and out underneath. Yes. Yeah. And then it just, boom, into, we've got beatbox, it's <laughs> out the next bit. So it's, um, it's really quite cool. It's been really good. And your beatbox is doing very well. Yeah. Well, that, he's good. Yeah, Sam, he's, he's great. Um, normally we would amplify um, yeah. um, sort of um, vocal percussion, but in this, because all of our performances are acoustic. Yeah. So yeah. he sort of has to give a little bit more air behind it yeah. to let it carry. But it's really cool. And I think, that's testament to you as a composer as well, that you, you identified Fessies and what we bring and that kind of spark um, 
you know, and and the, the guys really do do have that fire or like that authenticity and openness. Absolutely, it's there. It, it, it's there, and, and, and you know, one of the joys joys of composing is to be able to write for a group that is just that just embraces what you do, and to know them enough so that you think, okay, I've got a bit of a sense as to what the strengths are, yeah. and you know, to then just to let them run with it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I must admit, I'm not one of these composers who has trouble handing over. Um, you know that my other persona is the conductor, mm-hmm. and as a conductor, I'm pretty much a control freak. <laughs> but when it comes to being a composer, I love handing something over at that stage to musicians I trust and think, I wonder where this is going to go now. Mm. That's actually exciting. And I think, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. We've done a few sort of commissions with emerging composers and some of the younger guys mm-hmm. and besties and, and just seeing sort of, you can see the the light in their work. You know, they, they've got this idea and then they actually hear it like by voices and then each singer brings their own personality yes. and timbre yes. yeah. and it just sort of takes on a new body. And, absolutely. You know, and if another yeah. choir sings the work, it takes on a new life again. Yeah. So. No, we're, we're absolutely thrilled and we can't wait to premiere it. Yeah. Um, well, I wish you all the best in, in Hobart. I can't wait to hear it on July 15th. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. Thanks, Carl.